This video introduces the wedge out proof rule. Wedge out is our only three line rule. Every time you see a wedge in your proof, you have to think about this rule, and it requires that you go look for two relevant conditionals. Let's me rewrite it down here and let's think about it. Every time you see a wedge, you have to go look for two arrows. One that takes the P part and points to something, and another one that takes the Q part and points to that very same something. If you find all three of these lines, then you get to write the something that they're both pointing to. Here's a story to try to make this make sense. I'm either going to make pi or I'm going to make quiche. If I make pi, it will be remarkable. If I make quiche, then it will be remarkable. Therefore, I'm going to make something remarkable. Sometimes this rule is called dilemma. That's kind of a traditional name for it. Dilemma has negative connotations, and the rule doesn't have any negative connotations. But you'll notice there are two possibilities, and both possibilities get you to the same place. So two ways of getting to the same place. In fact, probably the best way to think about this rule is that it's really a combination of two arrow outs. If you have P arrow R and you have P, you would get R. Or if you have Q arrow R and Q, then you would get R. So Q arrow R and Q, or P arrow R and P, and either way you're going to get R. Well, I hope the meaning is, is fairly clear. Let me get this out of the way, and let's see if we can use the rule. Okay, so here's an argument. The first line has a wedge as its main connective. That means we should think about wedge out. Although, to be honest, notice that line 2 has an ampersand as its main connective, so why don't we go ahead and break that up? Let's do the easy work first. So I get to write B arrow M on line 5, and then I get to write F arrow B wedge D on line 6. And then that will be 2 ampersand out done twice. I like ampersand out. Check it off. Now let's think about line 1. It has a wedge as its main connective, so obviously it is an instance of P wedge Q. F by itself is P, and then the Q part is all that stuff in parentheses. That's obvious. Well, if I see a P wedge Q, the rule tells me I have to go look for P arrow R and Q arrow R. Do I have a conditional someplace that starts with F? Well, in fact, I do. So here's a potential P arrow R. The Q part is tilde E arrow G. Do I have another conditional that starts with E arrow G? And by gosh, I certainly do right here. And so here's a potential Q arrow R. Are the R's the same in both lines? And yes, here it's B wedge D, and there it's B wedge D. Aha! On line 7, I'm going to get to do the wedge out. P wedge Q, P arrow R, Q arrow R. I've got all three things, so the rule says I get to write R. And the R part is B wedge D, so that is what I shall write. What will the justification be? Well, it's a three-line rule, and so we're going to have to cite all three lines. It will be 1, 3, 6, and the rule wedge out. Great fun. We can now check off 1, 3, and 6 because we used them all. Just to clean things up, let me get the uh, eraser here and say, ah, come on, guys, I'm getting rid of all of you. There we go. Now back to the pencil, and I can check off the lines I just used. 1, 3, and 6. Is there anything else for me to do? And the answer is definitely that there is. Do you see it? Well, I don't have a D for arrow out. I don't have a B for arrow out. But I do have B wedge D. In fact, when you see that you have two conditionals pointing to the same letter, 
you should kind of be thinking about wedge out even if you're not seeing the wedge. But when I see the wedge on line 7, I again say to myself, well, there's P wedge Q. Do I have the P part pointing to anything? Of course I do. There's P arrow R, and the Q part D, well, there's Q arrow R. What's the R? It's M. So yes, I've got the parts. Let me write M. And the justification for that is going to be what? 4, 5, 7, and the name of the rule, wedge out. Ah yes, great excitement. Having done that, I'm actually done. Because now I can use my very cool, super powerful wedge in rule. And what I see is that the wedge is the main connective. So to build this, all I need is one half or the other. And I'm done. So line 9 is merely 8 wedge in. Where did that F wedge D come from? I pulled it out of the air because that's what this rule allows me to do. Notice this D right here has nothing to do with the D that showed up above, nor does it have anything to do with the F from up above. All we did was take the M by itself and wedge in the other parts. We pulled them out of the air because that's what wedge in is all about.